Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. In this tutorial of the Camera 2 APIs tutorial series, we're going to be setting up the saving to the saving the image, um, setting up the code for that. So we're going to be using one of the surfaces provided by the Camera 2 APIs to actually get a image still, and we're going to save that to a file. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my code open here. I'm going to add some more members. Let's let me scroll on down the bottom here and close this. The okay, first thing I want to do is I want to create this a file member inside the activity just to contain the um, image that we're going to save to. Let's create that here. It's going to be a file. I'll call it M image file. Okay, the next part of the code is when we press the image capture, taking capturing a photo, we're going to set up the code that creates the file location for us. And so in take photo, this I've still kept this button click, and so I'm just going to grab a bit of code from here, save that, and just paste it above the lock focus. We don't need this top line because we've set this up as a, an, an activity member, and go to this line. And we'll just change that to our, our member we just created, our file member we've just created. Okay, so I've now got a member inside the activity that I can access for, from any callbacks or any functions when I'm ready to save the file. Okay, the next step here is I want to create that uh, runnable so I can actually save the photo in our background thread handler. Let me go to our members. Okay, so down here, I'll just create another class um, rep uh, which represents a runnable. And I'll call this image saver. And it implements a runnable. Okay, first thing I will do here is I will override one of the methods. And it's just the run down here. Okay, the next step here is I'm going to um, initialize this image saver class. So I'll do that image variable first. Let's call it image. I'll just make that final. And it's an image. Okay, next thing I'll do is create a constructor for when we're initializing and creating our image saver. And let me make this private. So let's create this constructor. And it's going to take an image that we're going to pass through to it when we call it. I'll just call it image. Okay, we will initialize our image and let me tidy up the code here. We don't need... So the first thing we're going to do is create a byte buffer 
to contain the binary data, the byte data returned to us from the uh, camera to surface. This is a byte buffer. And we're going to get the contents of the data from the actual image itself. And that provides us with the plane representing the image. And we'll call get buffer. So now we've got the contents of the data. Now we want to set up an array of bytes where we're going to pass the data into. And the byte buffer will now contain the number of bytes of data in here. Right, now we can copy the data from the byte buffer into our byte array by doing this, calling, this, calling byte buffer, get method, and this will populate the bytes array here. Okay, so bytes here now contains all our data. So now I want to feed that data into our file. So next we want to create a file output stream. I'll just call it by default name. I've set it for null initially. Now we want to initialize our file output stream um, with the file that we want to write to. And we'll pass in our file. Now we're going to have to make an addition to our image file up here because it's being accessed from a static class, we're going to have to make our file static as well. Now the image file can see it. Right, so once we've created a file output stream that represents the location of where we want to save the image to, we can write the data into that location by just calling write. And passing in the byte array Okay, now we need to put a try-catch harness around it. These APIs need that. Okay, and once we've completed writing our bytes that represent the image, into our file, we just need to close down the image uh, member, uh, closing down the image, and we also need to close the file stream just to clean up any resources. So we'll close the image first. Now we'll do a check to see if the file output stream is closed or not. And if it's not closed, we call close on it. And again, we're going to have to put a try catch harness around that. Okay, that's it for the implementation of the image saver which, remember, represents a runnable that runs on the background thread. So if you're taking the image, you don't want to affect your UI thread. You might want to quickly take another image, and you don't want anything affecting the performance of your UI thread. OK, now we've done that, we can feed our image saver um, class into our image reader. So the image reader is what where we can 
attach a surface from the camera to APIs to actually get the image and then we can pass it into our image saver and save the image. Okay, so I need to create an image reader member. member. So where are we? I'll create a member. Let's create it underneath that. I'll just call it M image reader. I also want to create a callback listener for the image reader. So basically, once, once we've got an image that we can read from, we have a callback that's called notifying us of that. I'll call that private final. And it's going to be an image reader. We're going to call the callback. So on image available listener is what we're going to be creating. Unfortunately, I thought we have to use a long name here. Okay, so once the image is available, for us once we've taken it from the camera, we can pass that image onto our image saver and actually save it to the file. So what we want to do is call our background thread handler. And we're going to post our image saver runnable to that. And so this is going to take the reader and we're going to acquire the next image and pass it to that. Okay, that's it for those two settings. So we've now set up our members in preparation for capturing the image. The final thing we're going to do for this tutorial is working out the size of the image we want to actually save to. So we're going to do that in our setup method. So in our setup camera, we set up the sizes for our preview in one of the first tutorials. Now we're going to do something very similar, but set up the sizes for the size of the image that the camera is going to capture. I'm just going to do it under here and create a bit of space so I can see where I'm doing it from. Okay, from the map, we actually get a whole array of different dimensions that the camera can capture for. I'm just going to set a default of the largest image that the camera can capture. Okay, so I need to create a, a variable that's going to hold both the height and width of the largest size image. So I'll create the variable here. And what should I... Call it largest image size. And we're going to provide a collection for that just to get the, the, all, the, the, all the image dimensions from the camera 2 API. First member inside this collection is going to be an array list. And we're going to get the actual map of all our different image dimensions we can save to from the map. And once image format, so we're provided with an image format and we're going to use the JPEG image format. Now we want to get the, as we mentioned before, we want to get the largest image that the camera will save to. So we'll create a new comparator. And then we'll just set up a bit of code to return all our largest size from the array, from the array list.
put a semicolon on the end of that. Okay, so from the comparator we'll return the largest um, image size that our camera can take. And so with that information we can now set up our image reader. So we're going to initialize that object and create a new instance. So inside here we're going to provide the width and the height of the desired image we want to capture, which is going to be the largest image supported by the camera. So I'll just feed in the largest and get width first and then it'll be also largest, get height and we also want to pass in the format type which will be JPEG and this last one is how many images do you actually want to capture and it's just going to be one. You can capture more than one image into your buffer if you want, but we're just going to set up for one. Okay, after, after we've created the image reader, now we'll set up our callback listener, have that ready for us um, in preparation for once the image has been fully captured. And it's got the set on available listener, and we pass the listener that we set up before. And we'll also put in the background handler thread as well. So it all happens on the background handler. Okay. And I will call a stop to that. I'm showing 20 minutes on the clock. Hopefully editing will much shorten that a bit. So that's it. So I'm not actually going to do any editing through the code. For this particular one, I needed to get the image reader set up and I needed to get a mechanism for saving the images to the file set up here. Um, we're not, which next tutorial I expect probably we'll be able to actually catch the image, but we needed to get the mechanism set up for the image reader to extract the uh, image from the camera API service and get it saved to the file, which is what we've done here. So it's a bunch of code. The only thing that you might want to check, just to check, largest image size does contain data in it. Um, I've checked this book before myself, but it's, it's just one thing, so I didn't feel it was necessary for debugging with a tutorial of this length. Okay, that's it for this one, and if you want to keep following these tutorials and get notified of these tutorials, and you haven't already subscribed, you can click that button just down below me. That's all for this one. Bye for now.